So in the fourth module, uh, we will be discussing about uh, vibrations. The fourth module uh, covers the undamped vibrations. So what do you mean by vibration? What do you mean by vibratory motion? So when elastic bodies such as a spring, you have a beam or a shaft. So when an external load is applied or when it is displaced from the equilibrium position, due to the application of external force and when you release the body they execute a vibratory motion so this is mainly due to the presence of elastic or strain energy within the body so i am sure that you are all aware of uh, hooke's law stress strain relationship you know the young's modulus e is equal to stress by strain so within the elastic limit when the applied load is removed what happens the body goes back to its original position in other words, in order to understand vibrations, you have to have a basic knowledge of Hooke's law. Not only that, when the body reaches the equilibrium position during vibration, the whole of the elastic or the strain energy which I mentioned about is converted into kinetic energy. So that is the reason why the body continues to move in the opposite direction. So the whole of the kinetic energy is again converted into strain energy due to which the body again returns to the equilibrium position. So in this way the vibratory motion is repeated indefinitely. So you call it as a free vibration. We have a different uh, types of vibrations. We have the free vibration, we have the forced vibration and the damped vibration. So what may be free vibration? So as the name suggests, this happens in the absence of an external force. So body keeps on vibrating. So no external force acts on the body. After giving it an initial displacement, the body is said to be under free or natural vibration and the frequency of the free vibration is what you call as a free or the natural frequency of the body. As the case of forced vibration, when the body vibrates under the influence of external force, then the body is said to be under forced vibration. That is the external force applied to the body is a periodic disturbing force created by the unbalance. I am sure that uh, we uh, studied about the unbalancing uh, there is a centrifugal force, a disturbing force, the unbalanced force which causes a lot of havoc in the mechanism of a body. So similarly in the case of freeze, uh, forced vibration, the external force applied to the body is a pre periodic disturbing force created by the unbalance in the body. And uh, the vibrations have the same frequency as the applied force. So absence of an external force in the sense that is which it just gives an initial displacement and when no external force acts on the body you call it as a free or a natural vibration in the case of forced vibration the body vibrates under the influence of an external force so what do you mean by damped vibration damped vibration is also a form of forced vibration the difference is there is a reduction in amplitude over every cycle of vibration so the body will come to rest the body or the moving body or the vibrating body will come to a standstill. So this is due to the fact that a certain amount of energy is dissipated. So energy dissipation takes place in order to overcome the frictional resistance that is applied to the body. So we call this as a damped vibration. So in this uh, short video we will be uh, discussing a few problems on uh, uh, the uh, free or the natural vibrations. We have different uh, natural vibrations or the free vibrations. We have the uh, longitudinal vibration, we have the transverse vibration and the torsional vibration. As you can see, um, this is the longitudinal vibration. So if this is the axis of the shaft. So when the particles of the shaft or the disc moves parallel to the axis of the shaft, you call it as a longitudinal vibration. So in this case, if this is the axis of the shaft, this is almost perpendicular. This you call this as a transverse vibration. So the particles of the shaft or the disc moves approximately perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. You call it as a transverse vibration. Whereas in the case of uh, torsional vibration, this either it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So this is the axis of the shaft. You call it as a torsional vibration so the movement is that there is torsionally the body moves either clockwise or anti-clockwise so when the particles of the shaft or disc move in a circle about the axis of the shaft we call it as a torsional vibration now let us uh, determine uh, the natural frequency of the 
free longitudinal vibration and you have a simple figure see so this is the initial position of the spring that is the unstrained position so only it be strain strain is the uh, change of length by the original length so when strain occurs there is a there is a change in the dimension of the body so let us consider uh, a mass uh, m that is attached to the spring that is whose weight is uh, mg you know what is mass into 9.81 so if delta is the initial uh, deflection so this is one condition and when you pull the weight even further when you apply more deflection to the spring so the final uh, deflection will be delta plus x so this is a static lift here delta is the uh, static deflection of the spring in meters due to the weight <coughs> w so this weight w is nothing but the force that is applied so what do you mean by stress? Stress is force divided by the unit here. Force acting on the unit here is the stress. So this weight also is a form of force that is applied to the spring. And X is the displacement of the body which I mentioned earlier. And S is the stiffness of the constraint. So it is a force required to produce unit displacement in the direction of the vibration. And M is the mass of the body suspended from the constraint in kg. And you have a simple derivation. You know what is the accelerating force mass into acceleration you have the restoring force which is uh, w minus of s into delta plus x so delta plus x is the final deflection uh, when you pull the weight w so when you pull it further so after the initial deflection when you pull it further this will be the final deflection and you have a simple derivation you know m means m into d square x by dt square is equal to minus s into x when you bring it here, you get the fundamental equation of a simple harmonic motion that is d square x by dt square plus omega square into x. So this omega is uh, represents the circular frequency. So omega is equal to square root of s by m. You know what is the time period is given by tp that is 2 pi divided by omega. And this is the final uh, equation 2 pi square root of m by s. And natural frequency is given by Fn is equal to 1 divided by Tp. That is the Fn will always be inversely proportional to Tp. That is the time period. And uh, so this is the uh, final equation. Fn is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of S by M. And when you apply the uh, values, that is uh, 1 divided by 2 pi square root of uh, G by delta, since Mg is equal to S into delta. So this is the stiffness, delta is the static deflection and you get this value, Fn is given by 0.4985 divided by square root of delta T. We'll also be seeing a few problems and you do have uh, different uh, situations in natural frequency of free transverse vibration due to a point load acting over a simply supported shaft. I am sure that you are very aware of uh, the basic formulas that are uh, used in the strength of material subject which you already you might have studied. So in strength of materials I think these things are very common are formulas. Uh, cantilever being with a point load acting at the free end. So this is the uh, fixed end. This is the free end. So this is the formula and uh, cantilever being with a uniformly distributed load. So this uniformly is distributed load over the entire length and this is the formula you can simply go through this uh, and it is available in any strength of material book. I will see a simple problem. So you have a shaft here of a uh, length of 0.75 meter and uh, these are the given data. So it is given by 0.75 m is uh, 90 kg. So it is freely supported at the ends. So this beam is freely supported. So that is, you know the formula for a freely supported a beam. Uh, here the uh, this is the weight that is acting 90 kg, a distance of 0.25 meter from A. And you know what is the moment definition of the shaft? I is equal to pi divided by 64 into uh, d power 4. Simple substitution of formulas, you'll be able to get what is the static deflection delta. So in order to find the natural frequency of transverse vibration, we know the formula Fn is equal to 
0.4985 divided by square root of delta t and this is the answer okay now uh, the next one would be the natural frequency of free transverse vibration to uniformly distributed load acting over a simply supported shaft and this is the formula for it so the uh, vibration module is very simple we have to understand if you are able to understand the basics of uh, what will be a cantilever beam simply supported at the ends supported, supported at uh, fixed at both the ends I mean it's simple application of formulas so I will be uh, uh, doing the uh, this presentation in a hurry and uh, so the natural frequency of free transfer vibration of a shaft fixed at both ends carrying UDL that is uniformly distributed load may be found out using the uh, dunker lease method so natural frequency of uh, TV transfer vibration for a shaft carrying a number of point loads so these are the number of point loads W1, W2, W3 for example so if delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 is a static deflection due to the load W1, W2, W3 when considered separately so this is the uh, what do you call as a Dunkley's empirical formula the Dunkley's empirical formula according to this we have this uh, expression 1 divided by Fn whereas the Fn is the natural frequency of transfer vibration of the entire shaft carrying point loads and these are the inch, each point load that is natural frequency of individual point loads and Fns is the natural frequency of transverse vibration of the uniform distributed load or due to the mass of the shaft and it is given by the final expression Fn is equal to 0 0.4985 divided by square root of uh, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 and so on plus delta is divided by 1.27 so this delta is I repeat that is related to so when there is no uniformly uh, there is when there is no UDL the mass of the shaft is negligible so delta is given delta is will be 0 so all you have to find is only this formula you have to apply only this formula for, for a simple Schwarzschild shaft may be obtained from the relation I think you know this formula delta is given by uh, W A square B square divided by 3 I uh, use the Young's modulus I use the amount of inertia of the shaft and L is the total length of the shaft we will be uh, seeing this applying this Dunkerley's method uh, in this problem so you, ha uh, you have here a shaft 50 mm there 3 meters uh, long simply support at the ends and it carries 3 loads so these are the loads given in terms of newtons 1000, 1500 and 750 newton and uh, this is the uh, uh, that is the diameter of the shaft is given by D convert that into meter and you have the L is the length of the, sha uh, the uh, shaft that is 3 meter W1 these are the loads and apply the formula for uh, uh, that is uh, for a simply supported shaft at the ends I think the formula we already know from this tabular column yeah from this tabular column we will be able to find out uh, the formula we have just applied here so w a square b square divided by 3 e into y into l and here you are supposed to find the individual static deflections it is individual load so delta i on 1 due to 1000 this load 1000 newton so find the form find the uh, result and then apply it to the final formula so delta 2 delta 3 and finally you will be getting the uh, Fn that is the natural uh, frequency of the transverse vibration for the whole shaft and one more thing is the uh, critical speed so critical speed or the whirling speed and that is speed at which the shaft runs so that the additional deflection of the shaft from the axis of rotation becomes infinite you call this critical or the whirling speed so this is the stationary position so in the stationary position you can see this is the rota this is the uh, shaft axis so E represents the eccentricity and when the shaft rotates you can see the, the deflection that is happening so this is the final shaft axis and this is the critical or the whirling speed of a shaft so the additional deflection of the shaft from the axis of rotation if this is the axis of rotation this is the additional deflection of the shaft 
and the critical of the whirling speed is given by uh, you know the omega c you know the formula square root of s by m which is equal to j divided by delta in terms of hertz and this enc is a critical of the whirling speed in radians per second so if you find the value of fn you can even multiply that by 60 you will be getting uh, the value of enc so let us see uh, so this here cnc critical of whirling speed is the same as a natural frequency that is fn of the transverse vibration but its unit will be in revolutions per second just multiply that by 60 so you will see uh, a simple example so calculate the whirling speed of a shaft 20 mm dia and 0.6 meter uh, long carrying a mass of 1 kg so this is the mass 1 kg and the density of the shaft uh, material is 40 uh, mg per meter cube I think instead of going for this uh, we will go to the uh, next pro example this example is a lot more clearer so this covers uh, both the problems once again so uh, we have a vertical shaft around uh, 5 mm dia Uh, that is 200 mm long so this is the given data given the dia is 5 pi mm so you have vertical shaft 5 mm dia is 200 meter long and is supported uh, in long bearings at its end so you disk of mass 50 kg is attached to the center of the shaft something like this center of the shaft so neglecting any increase in stiffness due to the attachment of the shaft of the uh, attachment of the disc to the shaft Find the critical speed of rotation and the maximum bending stress when the shaft rotating at 70% of the critical speed. And initially you have to calculate uh, the I value, moment of inertia of the shaft, and then substitute the value in static deflection for a that is shaft that is supported in long bearings at its end. So this is the formula. Again, this formula we found out using this tabular column is available in the strength of material book. So find uh, the value of delta and you know the critical speed of the rotation is given by nc 0.4985 divided by square root of 3.33 into 10 power minus 3 that is delta value i'm sure uh, you are aware of the formula we saw earlier so nc is given by square root uh, it is uh, either 1 by 2 pi or square root of g by delta if you substitute the value of 2 pi into and uh, g 9.81 directly can substitute in 0 0.4985 divided by delta is the square root of delta that is what is done here so we found the critical speed of rotation or the natural frequency of transverse vibration ENC so uh, my, uh, no maximum bending stress so you know this uh, formula that is, uh, equa that is this equation m by i is equal to sigma divided by y n y1 and uh, m is given by See, see uh, the, the aim of this, uh, this equation is you are supposed to find the additional dynamic load W1 to which the shaft is subjected to. So we know, we know that for a shaft fixed at both ends carrying a point load W1, so this is the uh, bending moment. M is given by W1 into L divided by 8. So these two expressions may be equated. So sigma into I divided by Y1 is equal to W1 l into l divided by 8 so when you equate both these equations that is the maximum bending moment formulas you will be able to find what is the additional dynamic load w1 and uh, additional deflection due to load w1 is given by y is equal to w1 divided by w into delta so this y1 is given by is d d uh, by 2 that is this value d by 2 that is what is uh, substituted here and uh, you'll be able to find what is the additional deflection due to load w1 so i repeat the aim of this equation is to find out what is the additional dynamic load w1 to which the shaft is subjected to so after finding w1 you will be able to find out what is 
the additional deflection due to the load w1 so y is equal to w1 divided by w into delta i think the values are already given mass is 50 so 50 into 9.81 will give you the value of w this value and delta we already found out 3.33 to 10 power minus 3 substitute them find the additional reflection due to load w1 so y is found out that is 3.327 10 power minus 12 into sigma And we also know uh, this expression y is equal to plus or minus e that is eccentricity divided by omega c divided by omega the whole square minus 1 or uh, directly if you cancel uh, the 2 pi uh, you will be directly get 2 pi 60 you will be uh, directly getting this expression nc by n minus 1 and uh, substituting wc is equal to nc that is what uh, you will be getting this uh, equation now you, are supposed, now, uh, you have to equate this y bit this y so y is equal to 3.327 to 10 power minus 12 sigma and this expression you'll be able to find what is the bending stress so the sigma represents the bending stress thus we found the value